Despite Duck's concern, William handled his journeys between Knapford and Harwick well. All his trains were on time, and Sir Topham Hatt was most impressed. Everyone on the Little Western made the Prairie Tank feel right at home, including Duck. But all the same, he kept a watchful eye on William, just in case. Winter had come again to the island of Soda. And the engines began one particular morning by listening to William tell stories about the snowfalls in Didcot. And then the coaches were all steam heated, keeping the passengers warm. <sighs> Those were the good old days. Indeed they were. I don't think the auto coaches here have it fitted. Maybe Sir Topham Hatt should have the light eaters in them. Duck and Oliver looked at each other in agreement and were just about to say another word when. Oh dear, here comes trouble. Double trouble. Okay, all this blasted white stuff on the ground, it just never seems to end. And these plows are starting to make her wee buffers ache. I swear, if I see another foot of snow, I might as well be painted blue. Hey, it's like the weather hates us or something. <laughs> twins will be twins, am I right? <laughs> William, some special holiday makers from the mainland are coming to the island. They've asked to see you, since you're a representative of your class and your brother is on display at Didcot. Yes, sir. I'll get right on it. And with that, Sir Topham Hat left. Do be careful out there. May need a snow plow. Snow's meant to be thicker and- I can manage, thank you. You act like I can't manage on my own. And there he goes with the dismissive attitude again. Well, he wouldn't be the first engine on the line to say that. Fresa, 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 fresa. What's this? I don't need a snowplow. Sorry, buddy, but Sir Totten Hat door is. Every engine's gotta have a snowplow. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Oh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> You'd think some engines would be more polite. William reluctantly had his snowplow fitted, and soon he was ready to start his journey. Now arriving at platform 5 is the 10 a.m. service bound for Harwood. Please stand clear of the platform as the train arrives. Alright, leaving soon. The train now arriving tender Stupid weather. Doesn't Sir Totten Hatton know that tender engines are meant to go tender first? It's undignified. At least he doesn't have to use turntables, and he is just a large tank head. Hmm. Perhaps if I traveled backwards for the whole trip, I wouldn't have to wear this horrid old snowplow. Hey, driver! Well, this has made the trip a lot less pleasant. Little did he know that that wouldn't be the worst of it. A new foot crossing was added to the front of Arlesborough Station. Phew, I don't know about you lot, but I think we should take a break. But shouldn't we check to make sure we laid it down properly first? I'm sure it's fine. Look, my hands are freezing. I want to get inside and warm up. Fine, have it your way, Harry. Just remember to bring your gloves next time so we don't have to stop every time your hands freeze up. Sure, it wasn't anything important. Yeah, come on. Come on, come on, hurry up, Ryan, or I'll miss my path to the junction. I'm a guaranteed connection. After all, I'm the finest the Great Western has to offer. 
This made Ryan cross, and he deliberately puffed slower. Soon the passengers transferred to William's train, while the driver and fireman made sure the snowplow was fitted to the back end of William. Come on, come on, come on, we can't be late. William puffed backwards out the station, his wheels slipping on the icy rails. Every wise engine knows never to travel fast through any snowy weather, especially if they are traveling bunker for a tender first. But William was too puffed up in the smoke box to care. Oh, be careful with the snow, they say. Take a snowplow, they say. Stupid engines, I can manage with my eyes closed. Oh, uh, William. I worked on auto train before and I handled them fine. William! <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh dear, 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 uh, uh, all traffic halted. The alarm was raised, traffic was halted in all directions, and the passengers slowly made their way off William's train with the guard and station master's guidance. William felt more embarrassed than hurt, but his wheels did get bent in the crash. I'm a horrid engine. I hear you've been too big for your buffer stick. I'm not sure how they do things on the mainland. But on my railway, if someone asks you to put on a snowplow and obey speed restrictions, you do it without fuss. Yes, sir. I I'm sorry, sir. Once you've been mended, you'll be doing nothing but collecting scrap for two weeks. Perhaps that will teach you to take care as you work. Yes, sir. I told you not to let that service go to your smoke box, William. But you didn't listen, and look where it's gotten you. I know, derailed and put on scrap duty. But hey, maybe you won't mind collecting scrap. I know I enjoy a good ballast run. So, do you think you've learned your lesson there? Looks like it. No more going over the speed limit or looking anywhere but where you need to? Yes. Doing it the old Great Western way? Because it's either that, or... Okay, Duck. I think he gets the point. Come along, William. <sighs> Apparently that's all I can do. <sighs> and I thought I was the only William around these parts. <laughs> Guess not. You'd be surprised, man.